Oscar, played by Matthew Perry and Peter Oliver Platt, land a career-making opportunity when a Chicago tycoon, played by Dylan McDermott, chooses them to compete for the design of a cultural center. The tycoon mistakenly believes that Oscar is gay and has him uh, and has him spy on his mistress, Amy, played by Neve Campbell. Oscar goes along with it and ends up falling in love with Amy. Welcome to Dad's Downtime Movie Glue. Um, I am your host, Steve Bassett, alongside with Dave Stanley, Tyler Coral. Um, real quickly, guys, please give us a like and a follow on our Facebook and Twitter at Dad's Downtime. And if you can, if you're watching on YouTube, excuse me, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like, sub, and um, leave us a comment. So the movie for today is Three to Tango. And we glue that together from our last movie last week, which was Swingers, and the actor that I picked was Patrick Van Horn, Sue's character from Swingers, and he is in this movie playing the role of Zach. So, um, so let's get started, boys. What'd you guys? Uh, what'd you guys think, Dave um, or Tyler? I think you uh, you go first uh, yeah, today. Tyler can go first this time. Uh, all right. So I'm going to start by saying I liked this movie. Um, I did have qualms, if you will, about this movie. Uh, so I wrote down in my notes that the first act was pretty solid and funny. Um, and so I, I, I kind of, whenever I'm thinking of movies, I always split it into three acts, right? You have your opening, which introduces your characters. You get kind of like a hint of where the story's going. And then you get your meat of the movie, which is in your second act. And then you've got your resolution just like a book or anything like that. Um, so, like I said, first act I thought was solid and funny. The second act of this movie. It felt way too long. Um, the only problem I had with it is it's almost in the same way Swingers was. It's very repetitive, right? He goes through the same motions over and over and over again. I'm not gay. I'm gay. I'm not gay. I'm gay. I'm not gay. I'm gay. And that while it was funny for like maybe the first 15, 20 minutes and a lot of the scenarios that he was getting into, I got bored of it. I really did. Um, and so it made the movie feel like it was just dragging on. And so I was finding myself at this point when I was watching the movie and you see him catching feelings for, um, what was her name? Amy, I think yeah. was her name. Yeah. Um, you see him catching feelings for Amy and it's like, dude, just admit that you're not gay and let's get on with it. <laughs> like, yeah. So not, not to interrupt your review. Like I, I couldn't understand why time and time again, it's like, dude, you could just tell her. Right. And she'd probably play along just for him to get the job, honestly. Um, and so like the logic of the movie kept like bothering me. Um, like I said, I liked the movie. I like the scenarios. I like Matthew Perry. He's a great actor. I like him in Friends. He actually has another rom-com that I enjoy a lot called Fool's Rush In, which is a great movie, uh, him and Salma That's Hayek. Funny that you say that because a lot of... The, I was reading today some uh, small like little like quips or articles or whatever about that's the that's the role that killed his acting career. <laughs> Really? I actually <laughs> liked that movie by him a lot more than I liked this. Well, at, least, um, at least his movie acting career. Yeah, okay. See, I like that movie more than I like this one. I thought it was funnier. I thought it was more heartfelt. I thought there was more of a driving force, emotional connection between the characters. Um, so it was just like you and I were mentioning before uh, the show began about uh, taking away certain things from a movie and that's what you should be looking for. Not so much whether or not critics enjoy the movie, mm -hmm. but anyways, um, as far as Dylan McDermott is concerned, I did he not a like this douchebag. I did not like this role for him. Um, he played it well. And I think that that's probably why I didn't like it <laughs> is that he plays the douchebag so well. But the problem I have with it is he's a very cookie cutter douchebag. Right, he's very. This is what Hollywood is shaped to be a douchebag over the last, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty years. Um, Tyler, Tyler, if you um, ever watched the Law and Order: Organized Crime season one with Stabler um, and Dylan McDermott, 
Um, this is exactly how he is in that show, too. Really? Is he? Is McDermott I've, in that? Yeah. Okay. Oh, McDermott shit. is the main enemy, main bad guy in season one. Yeah. Just playing it's, a total douchebag. I tried yeah, big, big to start. I tried to start watching it, but I was working at the same time, and it's like I gotta be able to sit down and actually watch this. To oh, it's a fantastic show! I can't. Yeah. Myron, I cannot wait for season two to come out. I think that comes out interesting uh, September twenty third. Yeah, Dale McDermott. Yep. But uh, sorry, Tyler, go on. Yeah. Um, Oliver Platt. I like Oliver Platt a lot. I've seen a lot of his movies. I think he's really funny. Um, he does get himself into some weird roles that kind of. You know, I get put off by him every once in a while. But for the most part, I like Oliver Platt a lot. It's an overly flamboyant uh, role. He is, yeah. and But, I mean, he plays it well. I mean, he does he a really good job. Actually, I think Oliver Platt, aside from Matthew Perry, is probably my favorite part of this movie. Um, He does a really good job just portraying that character and making it look natural and it feels right for him. And which... I don't know if Oliver, Oliver Platt's actually gay, but um, he pulls it off. He does a really good job acting it. Um, I think he does a really good job acting uh, or pulling off the stereotypical semi-wealthy gay man. Right. Yeah, which yeah, is kind of kind of cliche yeah. as, as, for what people would think of a gay guy. Yeah, true. Um, he does like, but. It's weird because, like I said, it feels kind of natural for him, which is, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's like what he was going for. I'm sure it probably was. But um, I like his character. I like how goofy he is. I like the weird little dialogue you get with him and other characters, uh, specifically towards the end when he uh, when he hooks up with the football player. <laughs> um, I thought that that just that whole conversation was hysterical. But um I don't like that he took such a major backseat through the second act of the movie. He takes such a backseat that you almost forget about him until he randomly I mean, pops up, I feel like. He's really not a main character of the movie, though. Right. And so that's, <laughs> that's where I got a little weirded because like, I like him so much and I wanted to see more of him, but I didn't get to see more of him. And so them passing off this character um i forget what his name was in the movie uh but anyways oliver platt being they're trying to pass off that they're like really close friends really good friends and uh they have been for a really long time he is very uninvolved with his friend's life even though he is overly involved does that make sense mm -hmm. um so it, it got a little weird there for me um nave campbell, <laughs> Neve campbell. I would Nev. Neve, Nave, Nev, whatever. I don't care what her name is. That Nev, woman Nev, is. I would the like the reason I wanted I would, to keep watching this. Movie. I, I, I have, I have this note in here on my uh, sheet. I would love to get caught in a thunderstorm with Nev Campbell. Oh, buddy, that just looked like fun. Ooh, buddy, minus the whole, would I? Minus the whole ball punching part. The only note that I have for her is Nave, Nev, Neve, whatever you want to call her is a fucking babe that woman is stunning like seriously that but she plays her character really well too i will say she that does. her acting in this movie is really good very quirky um, yeah exactly now i'm gonna go ahead and get into my overall score because i don't want to stretch this out too long um yeah, that's a good idea like i said I liked the movie a lot. I thought it was funny at parts, but I did have problems with it feeling like it was just being dragged out a lot. It felt longer than it should have been. Like, I felt like they could have probably cut off a couple scenarios in the second act and it would have still had the same impact. Um, but overall, it's an okay movie. Um, not very high on my Matthew Perry radar for sure. And that's saying something because he's not been in a ton of movies. He's just been in a a few really good ones back in the 90s so yeah that's where i sit all right so this being a steve movie in a sense office space was a steve movie he he yeah. wrote me for a long time about go seeing that movie and if you guys watched um episode one of movie glue you would find out that i didn't really think it was that great of a movie um steve you redeemed yourself i fucking love this movie it was really? i found it 
I found it funny. Um, I've heard people, I've heard it be likened to a really long episode of Friends, which I can, I can understand where they come from with that. Yeah. But yeah, I, in general, I love this movie. Um, while Tyler, you said that it kind of dragged on for you. My wife and I sat there watching it in bed the other night and we couldn't believe how quick it went. Really? Like, <laughs> So uh, before I get into some of this other stuff I have written down, so a few of the notes, I uh, already talked about Nev Camel and the uh, Thunderstorm. Um, I noticed, once again, another late 90s movie with that we've seen with ska music. Like, That's true. Another movie, typical late 90s ska music. Got it. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, um... I wouldn't be surprised if people saw me and Steve as Oscar and uh, Peter Peter um, when we hang out. Like, I totally I, that would see not, it now. Yeah. That would not surprise me <laughs> one bit. I see it now. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So, I mean, you went over a lot of the main parts uh, to really touch on. And mm-hmm. I kind of chimed in there. It There were a lot of parts where... He could, uh, Matthew Perry's uh, role, like he could have come out and said, "Hey, I'm not really gay." Right. And yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, probably I mean could have. In his defense, he did. He tried he, to. He, <laughs> yeah. he did initially, and um, true. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan McDermott's character and uh, Amy, they both, mm-hmm. they both just disregarded it. Thought he was just pulling their leg. They did that whole denial thing. Oh, no, you're actually gay. You don't have to hide it from us. <laughs> right, right, right. Your typical comedy sitcom right. thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, like, it definitely made me laugh more frequently than Office Space. Um, I was I was getting a chuckle every few minutes out of this movie. Um, do I think this movie really works today with the amount of gay jokes? While they weren't being, like... Mm derogatory towards that community no i don't think you can get away with that mo- this movie today um well i mean let's look at it in real in uh real terms too in today's world no one no one gives a shit no one should you know? give a shit yeah no. right yeah like no one should care anyone's sexual orientation plain and simple. Yeah. it is i mean well i mean that but it's like there you know i mean there's people of all types all over the place. So, I mean, right. oh, we've got two gay architects working on our product. The, the, yeah. right. That doesn't get brought up. It's just, okay, you see a guy hugging a guy, you know, like like the secretary came at the wrong time and, oh, they're gay. Right. Who, who the fuck cares? Yeah, who cares? Right. Nowadays, it's like everybody's so, you know, that that's normal. It'd be more surprising if they weren't gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It is definitely made... I don't want this to sound wrong. It's made a point in this movie um, rather than it just being kind of flown by the wayside where I think, um, I think that's just being the... gay is like not an advantage, but it's something to exploit. I feel like is kind of what yeah. they were where uh, Dylan McDermott's mindset was not so much maybe like the right. entire right. And movie. I, I, think, but yeah. I think that's just the whole 20 year difference between now and when that movie was this movie was made. Where twenty hey, marriage years, wasn't legalized, <laughs> right? It wasn't legalized. Um, being gay was still highly shunned, up, like across the country and like, across most uh, demographics. I mean, look, like, look at his dad's reaction, right? Yeah. Whereas nowadays, like if I were, if either of my kids were to come up to me and say, "Hey, I think I'm gay," it's like, "All right, cool, whatever." Right. Like, it, it, I'm glad, like people are coming out more frequently and openly at such a at a much younger age to where it's not really a, a, a frowned upon thing anymore it's like it's more right. openly accepted right um let's see um going back to my notes uh like i said very fun fast moving uh the comedy a bit offensive in the current times obviously um <laughs> One the of the reasons, a little soft right now, anyway, Dave. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. 
uh, one of the reasons I probably love this movie, I was reading. So when, when we do these uh, movie reviews, I go into a lot of like, um, I, I, I tend to like glance over like uh, professional critic reviews, stuff like that, just to see what other people have said. I like to look at like their budgets and that kind of stuff. So I came across one of Roger Ebert's um, reviews on it. And uh, to just kind of paraphrase, he said it has an idiot plot. Yeah, that probably makes sense as to why I enjoyed it. It was such a simple, <laughs> stupid, uh, like slapstick yeah. kind of. I Not disagree stupid. because I'm sure Office Space would have gotten the same almost kind of reaction. You hate no, that movie, so no. For some reason, that movie got much better ratings and reviews. It was a great movie. <laughs> That's so, why. So, and I don't know if you guys noticed this when the when the movie started. Like, did it seem kind of low budget filming? Oh, for like, sure. But right, as so, it progressed, it gets a little better. It gets a little better, but. They, a a tw- they actually had a $20 million budget on that film. A rom-com? Yeah. Do you know how much that money that movie made? Ten and a half. So. There you go. $10.6 million. They They barely made back half of their money. Jesus. That movie did not do well. It did 4.7 in the Lord. opening weekend, I think. And it was like 8th the opening weekend. Jeez. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the too long didn't read uh, review for me is I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. Uh, I would, yeah. I I actually really liked that movie. It was a good selection, Steve. I mean, that how was, about you? Uh, you know what? I actually did enjoy it myself as well. Um, thought it was a good movie. Funny. I didn't find it boring. Uh, I actually enjoyed watching it. Um, I did watch it, you know, in pieces, so to speak, because of you know, a yeah, lot of other things going time, on. So, but um, yeah, I enjoyed the movie. You know, I liked. It, uh, what? Do either of you, either of you guys want to tuna melt? Just curious. Oh, God. I actually love tuna melts. I'm not I even gonna lie. Tuna melts are really yeah, good. maybe like, not. That, that, one did not, that one did not look good. The <laughs> fact no. that he went back there at the <laughs> end to just torture and destroy yeah. himself for it's what it's happened. It's a, it's one, yeah. of the, one of his fondest memories with her, though. Yep. I know. And then just initially, though, even before he went in, just riding his bike past it, seeing a guy run out. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Oh, he had the tuna melt. Yep. <laughs> How was that place even in business? How yeah, do you seriously. Have... Dude, you'd be surprised. And the, the, the one thing passes. that the dude is advertising is his damn tuna melt. Yeah. Oh, what's good here? Tuna melt's pretty tuna good. Melt. Hey, what else is good here? Tuna melt. <laughs> All right, yeah. we'll have two tuna melts. Yeah, fuck that. No tuna yeah. melt for me. I mean, I like tuna, but uh, no thanks. I'm not trying to eat and just throw it all up. But no, great movie. Uh, like the fact that it was from Chicago, you know? Yeah, right off the bat. I did like that. Yeah, you I know, did like Windy that. Windy City, a lot. get the uh, cool little backdrop of uh, the Hancock building right there, and then all the just the Chicago Tribune in the background as yeah, the, the, the opening across. the opening scene, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's walking across. I believe that's. That, I don't think that's Michigan Avenue. No, um, <clears throat> that but was, I mean, it's uh, just that was wacky. It's right near water. Yeah, it's right near Water Tower Place and everything like that. But that was just so cool to see a lot of those things. As I, hey, you know, I walk you know, yeah. walk there a million times, numerous times. You know? So that was cool. Um, you know what I found kind of funny right off the bat as well when um, I mean, why can't I, Kevin? Kevin is um, uh, Dylan McDermott's character is yeah. you know with uh, Neve Campbell or Nev yeah. Campbell and he is you know messing around with her you know so you know whatever and then the, the secretary grotesque, comes in his grotesque muscles oh that was before that yeah this, <laughs> this or that was after this point but yeah. it's just I found it funny when the secretary left and she closed the bookcase, so it's like he's got his office, and he's got a secret mistress, uh, mistress wow, hangout in his office up. On, I think it looked like that was a Hancock building, I'm not which positive. the wife somehow knows about later yeah. on in the movie. Oh yeah. boy! And well, it was it was on it was on the news when he got when McDermott's character got punched, right? Well, so she 
She yeah, probably yeah, figured she, it out. She didn't know about the the secret hideout right. though in his secret office. little room in his office. Yeah, because they were at the um, that gala or that banquet. Um, right. But but yeah, no, I mean, like there were just a lot of cool, funny, funny things, you know. And and I I don't know. I'm always I'm always a sucker for the the humor, you know. When when all the guys were back at their apartment. And then talking, you know, Zach, uh, Patrick Van Horn's character and, and the other buddies talking about um, the running back and saying, yeah, yeah. hey, he's hung like an army mule. They call it the Ponderosa. <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the movie, Oliver Platt's character, Peter, is just doing. Dun, 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 he's just yeah. just the fact that his eyes, the, the, the running back is like, they're all true. And his eyes are just like. Yeah, she's got super huge. So, like I said, like, the yeah. conversation have heard, was. Have you hysterical. heard anything about me, or do you know anything about me? It's like I've heard some things. Not much. They're all <laughs> true. true. <laughs> really? Oh man. <laughs> so that uh, I just found it funny when they are when um, Oscar and Amy are, you know, the very first night when they're kind of going around and he's you know, chaperoning her so to speak. Yep. They get in that taxi cab with that guy. <laughs> And the taxi breaks I'm down. Freaking out. And, yeah. hey, I'll, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. I'll look. <laughs> Blows up in his face. Disaster face. first date. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. I I wrote that down too. Where not only you know does he get elbowed in the face when he's trying to dig out her her um, high heel that she just clobbers him. Right. The one that gets everybody guys oh. yeah, at least. Is when she's fiddling around that second taxi cab door. Yeah, door handle. She goes right into his. You know, you know. I did like the callback joke to that later on with the whole "How's your nuts?" Yeah. So (laughs) now that now that think about it, my first date uh, with my wife Sarah actually does have some resemblance to their first date. The disaster date. I mean, it wasn't a disaster. It was a, it was a good day. Like it, she came yeah. over and we made pizza and whatever, and just watched some movies. Um, she actually had to stay the like. Movies. Well, we made out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she actually had to, uh, on her way home that night, had to pull off and throw up because of something she ate. Oh man! <laughs> so rough. I went. I went and picked her up and uh, brought her back to my place, and she slept there. Nice. Yeah, that was something I wrote in my notes. I, I forgot to touch on it. Was that even though the first date was a disaster, I found it adorable. Like oh, the, yeah. just that Absolutely. whole dynamic and that the everything, the way he handled it, and like the whole how she was interacting with it. I thought it was a really cute first date. I will say that I uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I thought that was I thought it was like an adorable little disaster date. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Before we get into our reviews, one other thing. Um, because we haven't even touched on uh, the other architects, uh, Decker and whatever. Uh, Decker being played by Bob Balaban and John C. McGinley popping up in another movie for us. Um, is, yeah. Love that at the end, those two ended up being gay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yep. that As they get into there. bed, I, I had that in there, so you kind of took that one from me. But yeah. Yeah. That was like they, they didn't have many lines. Um, and in reality, like it's it's kind of sad that the lines that they had were degrading the yeah. gay community. Yeah. Well, um, I think what it shows at the end, they're they're super in denial. Yeah. Or yeah. they're very super embarrassed positive. by exactly very embarrassed by their status, so they want to basically be that typical, you know, let me poke fun, direct the attention to them. And keep mm-hmm. as much away from us, and right, right. definitely got that feel. Yeah, and right. then it just proved that, you know, it, I mean, it really made you get that assumption and assertion once you see that last scene where they are um, crawling in bed with each other, just watching yeah. the TV. It's like, yeah, okay. But um, one yeah. more thing that I had, uh, if are you done? Yeah, Dave? no, yeah, go ahead. Okay, one more thing that I had. I mean, I got a couple, but I'll just stick it to one. I felt very, very bad um, for Peter at the events, like just with Oscar oh. looking at him, kind of like, "Hey, I'm gonna, I, I have to do it." And and Peter's just like, "You, you know, right. and just such a supportive, great friend." Like I just, I have, yeah. I felt so bad for Peter. He's like, and in in all, 
you know, Cap's great guy, and he was. Yeah. He was a great guy, great friend. I mean, yeah, he, he got on him and, you know, busted his balls at times, but, I mean, everybody does. But it's like, like he just knew. He's like, all right, well, we're pissing away as um, – His, his second mortgage, mortgage, his mortgage well, yeah, on his apartment. On his apartment. <laughs> $90 million job. And it's like, you know, we don't find that out until at the very end anyway. But yeah, it's like, right. you know, he's willing to just be like, hey, you know what? True love. Get it. Get it. I know you're not gay. Um, you be happy. And I'm happy to see you happy. And it's like, you know what? That's that is a true guy. But why didn't why didn't uh, oh, what's his name? What was Oscar. Uh, Matthew Perry's Oscar? Oscar. Why didn't why didn't Oscar say I can't accept this? But there is a gay man up here who absolutely deserves this. That's oh, what I, I was know. literally well, just gonna say. Why didn't he just pass off the award to his best friend, who literally is doing the same exact thing that he's doing? Why not just pass well, off the award? Yeah, it's because he wasn't so vocal, and you know, mm-hmm. I mean, good yeah, for the, like, the culture and everything. It's like, but I mean, he could have been like, "Hey, I was I was fed all the information from Peter." You know, and then they're like, hey, right. you know what? Okay, just like you said, pass it to him because yeah. I mean, Peter's a good guy. Yeah, He is, you know, yeah. Great guy. We're getting kind of but, long here, so uh, let's get into these uh, one out of five ratings, and then we'll get into what's going to happen next week. So one out of five on your model builds, would Dylan McDermott's character, which, like I said, I can't, I want to say it was Kevin, Right? Or Charles. 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 Charles' yeah. character. One out of five model builds. Would Charles pick your build? Tyler. Um, like I said, I like this movie. Um, I actually, I enjoyed it. But what I'm going to rate it on is uh, rewatchability. Not so much whether or not I like the movie. Um, I'm going to give it a two. Um... And like I said, I enjoyed this movie. It was funny at times. I got, um, I don't know how, maybe I was just not in the right headspace for a rom-com or something that day. But uh, it, like I said, it did drag on for me. Um, but I, I'll give it a two out of five. I would watch it in the background, but mostly for uh, Amy. <laughs> um, that woman is just so fun to look at. But anyways. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, I'm going to say two out of five. Okay. What about you, Dave? Um, yes, I'm, I'm torn between a four or a five. Um, Jeez, thought it was that good. Probably a four. Like I really, really enjoyed this movie. It was a lot of fun. Um, it would probably be a movie where I'm going through my movies anywhere. It's like, I want to watch something with my wife or something for a night. And it's like, hey, we haven't watched this movie in a while. Let's watch this. Yeah. yeah. Like, but like, I don't know if I would actually like go actively seeking that movie. Right. So I, I think a four is a four is a good score for that, I think. Yeah. And then just to kind of help keep it a little short since we are going long. Yeah. Um, I myself would, would go for for a lot yeah. of the reasons that he said good. I mean, I would definitely have no issue rewatching. I'm not going to go out of my way, uh, especially since I don't own the movie. So I'm not going to go mm-hmm. out and pay to see it again. But if there's a chance to see it, sure, I'll do it. I thought it was a great movie. So yeah, far. no, it was it was a lot of it was a lot of fun. Yep. I thought the laughs were frequent uh, yeah. and just enjoyable. Like my Sarah and I just sat there in bed and just like nonstop, just like every few minutes, just laughing or chuckling or something. Yeah. So, um, so with all that being said, uh, David, it is your turn to pick. So, who are we tying into and gluing these movies together with? So, I had a lot of great options here. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm mm-hmm. actually going to go with for my glue to the next movie. I'm going to go with one of the actors in this movie that did not have a lot of lines. He was Under not Van Horn, the- huh? Swingers? Yeah, Patrick Van Horn. <laughs> no. Um, okay. We are going to go with, and I'm, I'm picking him not because of the actor, but because of the movie that I'm tying him into. Uh, going to go with Bob Balaban, who played Decker. Okay. Um, One of the other architects. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The uh, bald head the bald head mm-hmm. guy. The one getting um, in the bed. Yeah. 
So yeah. next week, we will be, be reviewing The Mexican. Oh, that has I've seen The Mexican. Brad That's Brad and Julia Pitt, Roberts. Julia Roberts. It's um, a good movie. A, oh, yeah. Let's I've see. never seen it. I've seen uh, The Mexican Pitt, a couple times. Julie, yeah, Julia Roberts, James oh, Gandolfini, sh- J.K. Simmons, Gene Hackman. Oh, um, my God. Oh, wait. Yeah, you've got oh. some good ones to pick from uh, Tyler. I already know my next wow. movie. You said one of the yeah. names, and I was like, I, I, I got wanted it. to get away from the comedies, but this is still listed as an adventure comedy crime. So I'm sorry I couldn't get it. It is kind of a rom com, um, too, in a way. Because it does have some. I was, in there I was too, torn I between this one and Con Air. But this one is more easily accessible for us right now. So I'll find my way to Con Air later on. Con Air is so good. <laughs> Fucking great movie. Never seen it, so. So yeah, uh, that's this week of Movie Glue. As always, follow us on YouTube and on Twitter at That's Downtime. And if Facebook you're watching well. on, yep, if you're yeah, watching us on uh, oh yeah, sorry, on, on Facebook and on Twitter at the it's time. Thank you, Steve. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and if you're watching us on YouTube, give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. Um, Please. We will get back to as many comments as possible, which right now we don't get many, so we will get back to pretty much all comments. Um, <laughs> but yeah, as, always, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys at the movies. Later, guys.